inspired you to consider writing the script for 1066? Uh, well, I was in uh, Manila in my apartment back in 2000 and I just seen uh, Line in Winter with Peter O'Toole and Catherine Hepburn. I thought, well, you know, Peter O'Toole is like one of my, my all-time heroes and Catherine Hepburn as well. And I thought, what else could you write about historically? Because, I mean, English history is just littered with great stories. And I thought, well, hang on, how about 1066? It is the most important date in British history. It's one of the two most important dates in world history which affected um, man's social evolution, the other being Thermopylae. Um, so I thought, okay, let's go in and look at this. And I went on to IMDb to see if there'd been any movies on 1066, and there was one made in the 80s by Eastern European country, um, I don't think it was a Czech movie or a Hungarian movie. So I thought, okay, that's great, yeah, no one's really done this before, we'll get stuck into that, because normally I only take about two weeks to write a script. So I went there, so let's get to some research, did, did some reading, and I wrote my first script, which was 26 pages long plus the battle scenes, and I thought, oh, this is a load of crap. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Robin? You can't, you can't have the same approach as a contemporary script as you're going to... Uh, 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 you can't have the same approach with a historical script as you do with a contemporary script. So I okay. go, oh, yeah, back to square one. So now I moved to, to Singapore, and I started doing some research. So you, And you go, well, you know, where can you find historical documentation about the time? So there's the, the Sex and Chronicles, of which there are four versions. There's, a, there's two or three other ancient documents. And then, um, so, okay, let, let, let's write the script. So I, I wrote the script, and over a period of about three to four years, I got to version 12. And I thought, well, now, now we got something here. It's 132 pages long, which is about a minute a page, so that's a good two hours and a bit. Uh, now we're getting into something. And then, and then I, I thought, well, you know, there's just one problem. A lot of the, the, the main characters, okay, you know, William, okay, you know, uh, Matilda, there's a lot written about them. And then I need more other characters. So I thought, okay, we've got to go back and do some research. And I came across Helen Hollick's book, Harold the King. So I ordered it from Amazon and I, I read it and I thought, okay, Helen's got stuff in her book that I need to bring to the movie. Very good characterization. A lot of the minor characters that are important. I can't just have an historical movie with just the two or three top guys and they're just arguing and fighting, whatever you, it's not, that's not what it's about. So then he emailed Helen and said, okay, Helen, you know, I'm doing this movie, um, I want to steal stuff from your book. <laughs> and she said, well, okay. And I said, thank you. So then went and, and rewrote, and, and she has some very, very good characters, uh, characterizations that I just didn't have in the script. So I did, the, I did a rewrite, and I thought, okay, now I've got something that's worthwhile. And then I came over here, and I said, okay, here's the script, Helen, and then she sort of took two or three scenes out, hacked this out there, introduced some stuff there, gave it back to me, and then I said, hmm, okay, <laughs> scratch, 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 scratch. But the great thing about that was, is that in her book, she didn't have um, any reference to Tyrold, which is the small character in the Bear Tapestry. And I hadn't put it in the script. And she said, well, you know, Marty Kleber, who's a Pirates of the Caribbean, which she knew through someone, said, and I said, yeah, he would be great for this role. So then we gave a character to William who he can bounce off. And, and he's got some really great lines, Terrell. I mean, he's, he's sort of the, uh, I don't know, sort of the, the uh, I wouldn't call it the Agenu, the, um, uh, we, we can bounce off ideas and characters, and he's all come back with a, with a smart quip and a, and a, and a wise crack. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we introduced that character and um, we, we contacted Martin and said, you know, do you want to do the part? And he said, yes, okay, great. So we, we had that in. So then we, we had a script by about 2008, halfway through 2008, that I said, okay, that's enough. We're not going to do any more rewrites now. Mm -hmm. We, You can go on rewriting forever and the script has got to stand on what it is. And if you get people involved, other producers involved, who really 
experienced in the film industry, they'll know, yes, okay, you know, we're going to have to do some rewrites when you find the locations, when you do the rehearsals with the actors. So I then got Ten Ko uh, Ted Kotcheff involved, who was the director of Rambo, and he's now producing Law and Order Special Victims Unit. And he read the script and he, and he, he phoned me up and he said, Robin, uh, lovely script, great words, a little long. I said, well, you know, we've got the DVD to get out and people always want the extra bits and stuff. <laughs> he said, yeah, I understand that. He says, but don't mess with it. It's great. This is, this is, I haven't seen this in like 20 years. So when you originally wrote it before you'd read Helen's book about Harold the King, mm. did you just kind of have it all about William? No, um, no, it, it wasn't. Bec no, because uh, uh, the the Saxon Chronicles go before William, mm. so we actually start the movie on the death of King Canute. And you really have to understand that this movie is about Harold Godwin, Earl Godwin, Edward the Confessor, Queen Emma. It's really the Sopranos <laughs> in ten sixty six or before that, actually, leading up to ten sixty six. <laughs> okay, it's set back there. It's about uh, sibling rivalry. It's about uh, treachery, deceit, money, position, and and that's all happening in England. And then you've got this guy in Normandy who goes, well, actually, you know, <laughs> he's 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 been pretty ruthless. He's got to the top of his game there, and he wants to expand. So you've got two stories going on, mm -hmm. and then further down in the story, you've got then Hadrada. Scandinavian king who wants to come over here and, 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 and get a piece of the action as well. So you've got three things going on at the same time. And that so that's the whole that's the whole plot. And it's so much more than what you get at school. I mean, you know, hello, ten sixty six arrow in the eye, and that was about all my English teacher, Mr. Betts, taught me. And I go, Well, okay, it's actually a lot more than that. So ten sixty six is obviously one of the best well known dates in, in history. Do you think that most people don't actually realise the significance of, of what happened that year? Um, it depends on what age they are. I mean, I've been in, in Asia for 25 years and I've come back here and I'm meeting people who are under the age of 40 who have obviously, I don't know what's happened to the educational system here, but they don't have a clue of how important it is. Um, it's an importance worldwide because what the Normans introduced about no one being above the law, property law. I mean, I had an email in from um, a professor in America teaching property law, and he said, you know, this movie's got to be made. People don't realize that American property law is based on English property law, which comes down handed by the Normans. I'm going, okay, <laughs> thanks for that input. I didn't Sweet. realize that. Give me the money and I'll do it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. It's difficult to explain to people. My, my take on it, and I'm not a historian, but my take on it is, if the Normans hadn't won, I don't know whether there would be an America speaking English. It would probably be Dutch, German, Spanish, French, probably five, six, seven countries, maybe more, who knows. Um, Harold may have gone over had he beaten William, he may well have gone over to Scandinavia and, and taken over what was left of Hadrada's kingdom or whatever, I don't know. I mean, but certainly I think you wouldn't have had a British Empire, that's for sure. It, not, not, not in any way near shape or form that it was. And, and a lot of that comes down whether you like the Normans or not, I mean, what they introduced. And of course, they, the great thing about Britain is that Normans came, invaded, um, but we don't really speak French, we speak a lot of French words in the English language, our language has evolved, and they assimilated into Anglo-Saxon culture. And even though the Normans are here, most Brits still regard themselves as Anglo-Saxons, even though there's a Norman heritage there, that's sort of been sucked out and wiped out and we're still Anglo-Saxons. So people who watch the movie should be able to then uh, accurately describe what happened well, we try to be we've we've tried to be uh, historically accurate as possible, given that how much documentation do we have to get a hold of? 
Um, and also, we are a movie. At the end of the day, I want someone to be entertained. I mean, it's mm -hmm. going to be a long movie. I want you to come out and go, wow, that was really good. I really like that character. Wasn't he a real bummer? Oh, she was a bit crafty. I mean, you've got some great characters like Queen Emma, who was really ruthless. I mean, I mean, she was a good-looking woman, and she was ruthless. I mean, talk about Dynasty, you know. Uh, uh, Joan Collins' character in Dynasty. Well, this is, this is the same character um, nearly a thousand years ago.